So welcome to History Optional Daily Answer Writing and Mentorship Program, DAM. Uh, today we have two questions from megalithic era. Let me come to the question first. And then I will start expounding my exegesis. So the question is very simple. In what ways can the megalithic cultures, why I am skipping C, megalithic culture be considered as the foundational phase of the history of the peninsular India? Now, this question has been asked by UPSC earlier. It is not a new question. It is one of the PYQs. What I have found so far that when people start studying megalithic, they are very bold or they find it is something which is too much unrelatable because there are too many facts. So what I will do in the first few minutes is to give you an idea of the analytical perspective of looking at the megalithic cultures in India, especially South India, especially South India. That does not mean megalithics are only in South, they are all across India, they are all across the world. We will focus on South India because that is what UPSC wants us to do. And then I will tell you that apart from fact, these are the very few important topics on which a questions either have been asked or can be asked or will not be asked. We will see those issues one by one and then I will give you some comment on the questions answer that I have seen of few of you. And then we'll discuss the actual answer the way it should have been proceeded with. Let's start. These are the issues that I have in mind. Megalithic cultures beyond facts and features. I shared one PDF with you. It was 11 page document, a printout of some of some one very famous book on Indian prehistory. And that PDF was very useful. Uh, in normal books, we don't find enough data on this issue. What I have noticed that when you went through the answer, you somehow copied lot of arguments from that book. It is true that it should be used, but it is not entirely applicable as is. You have to tweak the data. For that, you should understand in what context the question is asked. So this is a list of different contexts, different lenses, different perspectives through which a question could be asked or a question which is asked otherwise could be answered and UPSC generally will not ask you a question on stating facts. Out of all the questions, hardly two, three questions come which are entirely factual. There is always and always some kind of context, some kind of basis, some kind of lens through which you can look at the question. So these are the various lenses. Not all of them will come in single question. Various possible questions can have one or the two lenses of this. Let us look at them. The first one is peculiarity of peninsular megalithic cultures. Why do we have this peninsular megalithic culture so important that we study them in separate way than the rest of the Indian megalithics? The very obvious and the first answer is that in south, south of Narmada, we have a huge concentration of megalithics. It is true. Although you find megalithic in Balochistan, you find them in Kashmir, you find them in Northeast India, you find them in Rajasthan also sometimes in some small parts. It is across India, it is across the world. But in Deccan and South, it is much more frequent, much more clustered and lot of sites are found. So it becomes a special case. But that is not enough. Second and very important thing is that Although megalithics appear across the world, generally, generally, they are found to have been constructed in Neolithic phases. In Neolithic, but in India, especially in Deccan and South, megalithics do not represent Neolithic phase. They generally represent Iron Age. Iron Age. So after Neolithic, we have Calcolithic, or sometimes they emerge together. We call them Neolithic, Calcolithic, and then you have Iron Age. Although some southern megalithics may belong to Calcolithic era, majority by and large emerged from 1200 BCE onwards, which is an Iron Age. In itself, it's a special case. And third thing, that phase appeared in South. That is, which is not only Iron Age, we see a relatively more intense shift away from pastoralism towards sedentary agriculture that is associated with megalithics. Megalithics were initially thought of as only burial sites which are not associated with long-term 
habitational site. So we initially thought that maybe people are pastoralist nomadic because in Neolithic era in Deccan and South, generally people were more pastoralist than agriculturalist. So southern people did not start sedentary life as soon as Neolithic started. For longer time, many communities were following pastoral nomadism. And they, we thought they were the ones who started this Neolithic. There are no habitation sites nearby, but now the image has changed. Now we know that Neolithic was undergoing change at that time. Megalithic culture is primarily associated with settled communities, habitation sites. So we also see the shift in agriculture, but, and this is an interesting but, agriculture in South started around this time, which is delayed by two, four thousand years compared to, let us say, northern Vindhya fringes or northwest borderland of India. So in Mehergarh, in Koldihawa, Kunjun, etc., in UP, the agriculture, settled agriculture started quite earlier. In south, it was much delayed. And then all the development started very quickly in a span of a few hundred years. So delayed and then very quick development of civilization. That is what is represented by megalithic in peninsula. So what are the peculiarities? Don't worry about it is sacrophagus, that is dolmen, this is men here. Those facts are important. We'll memorize some of them. But that is not the funda. The funda is the peculiarity of South Indian or megalithic, uh, peninsular megalithics is that it is firstly in Iron Age and not primarily Neolithic. Secondly, it is about sedentariness inside that shifting towards agriculture from pastoralism. And third thing, it is delayed but relatively quick paced development that happened in South in the first millennium BCE. That is the context. Now you know why to study it. Now this lens helps you to assimilate facts and then write answers. The second point is origin. Now interestingly, these megaliths, you see, the way they construct their megalithic structures is quite uniform across the many regions. It is not, there are some structures which are peculiar, but by and large, dolmen, menhir, all these things, sarcophagus, they come in from various regions. So because it was lit in south, it was similar to what was there in, let us say, Iran or Balochistan, etc. Many people speculated maybe the people from there have migrated to South India. So the old diffusionist paradigm came into being again to explain why it emerged suddenly in South. But it is not a proven thesis. If you read the old book, History of South India on Nilikant Shastri, in his book, he has given four or five pages on megalithic in detail. That book was written in the 1950s. In that book, he gives a lot of ideas. There also he takes that thesis of foreign origin of megalithics very well in consideration. But then he somehow discards it to some level. This foreign origin debate of megalithic is associated with two things. Firstly, because of their megalithic culture, megalithic structures. And secondly, because of iron. But we will discuss that in some time. You should know this debate is there. Now the debate is kind of settled. We know that they were not foreigners. They are Indian people only. The third thing is, if the Indian, who were they exactly? So this debate is not settled. We have no idea of their language. We have no idea of their culture beyond what archaeology reveals to us. So there was a debate. Are these people Aryan or Dravidian? It seems that uh, they must have spoken some languages. They must have started developing script also. On some megalithic structures, we have found graffiti marks which come close to the archaic Tamil Brahmi script. So, it seems that they were possibly Dravidian people. But again, these are more logical extrapolations than factual data. Then we have Iron Age related issue. Now, this issue is very important in our syllabus. And a question can be asked and has been asked on this in multiple contexts. Let me come out of megalithic for some moment and give you an idea of what kind of themes recur in our questions when it comes to Iron Age. Firstly, in the context of megalithic only. That in megalithic South India, we have profuse use of iron. Why 
did they fail to create urbanization? Because in North India, there is a school of historians who say that profuse use of iron, the technology of use of iron led to surplus, which led to urbanization. It is a kind of technological determinism. But if that is true, in South India also, exactly at the same time, we do have profuse use of iron, but we do not have emergence of urbanization. When you compare North and South, you have similar technological background, but you don't have similar social outcome. Why is the difference? Now, answer is there. I will not go into answer right now. I am just opening up your dimensions of studying megalithic. The second Iron Age related issue is the impact in later Vedic era. Because we all know that in North India, in the early Vedic, Rudvedic era, we have Copper Age. We don't have much of iron. The word ayas is referred as any metal. But when you come to later Vedic era, we see the beginning of Iron Age in North India. And when there is transition from early to later, we also have transition from copper to iron in Vedic India. What effect or what impact the beginning of usage of iron had on society, on economy, on polity in later Vedic era? It is a question. And a third question is about second urbanization. It's a very typical question. Every book, every teacher, every student initially gets fascinated by this. I am still fascinated by this debate because every time you read, you come across newer and newer dimension, more and more nuanced understanding of possible correlation of between Iron Age and emergence of second urbanization in Ganga Valley. So, we have these three important type of questions which may be asked, debatable questions. We have arguments from all the sides which are associated with Iron Age. Right now, we are concerned with only the first one, megalithic. Iron Age related issues. Why no urbanization? There is another issue also that maybe the technology of iron smelting came to India from outside. Right? Now, this thesis is long discarded. It was an old diffusionist theory that iron smelting first started in West Asia and people kept it secret for a long time. They had technological monopoly and gradually the idea diffused. And we learnt everything in India happens because outsiders teach us as per the diffusionist paradigm, which is now discarded. But anyway, then you have next point, internal diversity. Now, it is a remarkable thing. See, there are two types of uniformities in megalithic. Megalithic sites are distributed across India, especially across peninsula India, from Narmada to the tip of South India. We have thousands of sites of megalithic, all of whom have a similar type of megalithic structures. Now, once you have similar type of structure, does it represent or do they represent same society, same community of people speaking same language or all these different communities? And not only structures are similar, there is a remarkable, remarkable uniformity of around 20 iron implements, hoe and sickle and all other things especially the sword and other thing. These iron implements, especially especially warrior class implements or weapons to be very specific, these weapons are quite standardized, uniform across South India. And it is something very remarkable. Maybe, maybe it is representing the same community, same culture. So is there a uniform megalithic culture? The answer is no. We have megalithic cultures. It is a plural thing. Every region, every corner had a different megalithic culture. All of them had some things in common. That does not mean it was some uniform culture in South India. Then how come we have commonalities? Well, stone similarities are there across the world. So we don't have to go into that specially, specifically here. But when it comes to iron uniformity, the possible reason given by D.K. Chakravarti is that we have a community of smelters or iron People who knew metallurgy very well, they kept the knowledge very tight within themselves and they used to supply it everywhere. So the cultures were different, but some technological concentration was still there in case of Iron Age. The people migrated from place to place, they, call it, they carried their own culture with them. So that may be a possible reason for the uniformity of iron 
weapons and other things tools by and large but this culture as such is very diverse internally now this question i have specially asked in practice let me give you hint of answer right now right here right here right now so you have to go for different types of diversities one is diversity of ecological in nature you have different type of ecological settings and geographies which by default would have impact on the social organization then you have craft diversity occupational diversity looking at the grave goods you come to know that the diversity of crafts are there and there are different communities who follow those craft traditions if you look at the skeletal remains the skeletal remains also give us an idea there is racial diversity of people and then over such a long and vast stretch of land there would also be possibly linguistic diversity so all this we can talk about in internal diversity but the question on internal diversity is premised on the pre existing notion of uniformity so in the first half either introduction or in two three lines you talk of the uniformity of structures stone structures and iron implements and then for 70 part percent part of the answer you focus on different accesses access of diversity that makes your answer complete it's a very simple question it is more factually nature relatively if you know the debate and the last dimension is something on which we have asked the question right now for writing foundational phase to what extent it represented or in what ways it can be called as the phase of the history foundational phase of the south indian history now this question is premised on a very fundamental issue i have seen almost 10 copies so far and not a single person unfortunately has taken note of that thing and this is what i want to tell you the main take away point the main take away point of this discussion if there is any is to understand the point i'm talking now that you may have all the facts you may have all the facts which are correct but how to use them in the answer is a different skill because you have re read upinder singh romila thapad arish sharma some of you have even read the pdf that i sent from other book so all these things primarily give you fact which are correct but how to use those facts and put them in the context of the question to write a logical answer that is something almost none of you have done so far in this question at least and i was little dismayed so i will expound upon that a little bit today let us look at the word foundational phase foundational phase let me underline it over here what does it mean it means that there is something in the history of peninsula which will come and become important after megalithic era what is that sangam age so we know that the dawn of history in south happens in sangam era when we have literature it is the oldest tamilian literature available to us like in north india we have vedas in south india we have sangam literature and because literature begins there that is the beginning of history for us and what comes before that is that the pre or proto history don't have script here so it is prehistory so if you draw a timeline what you have exactly is from here onwards you may have beginning of sangam age which is the beginning of history and before that for long time you have prehistory and at the cusp at the intersection over here comes the megalithic phase right now some megalithic may be very old than this and some would continue even after this so i expect that not all magic some would be here also and some would be later also but they are isolate let us ignore them for a moment and focus on the main phase when you have the huge concentration of megalithic structures so 
the question is about something we call as change and continuity especially change the factors of what was there before there was no history there is some basic community some slow and gradual evolution and then here suddenly we have historic age beginning in sangam vipratra we see developed society it is not a tribal society anymore we, we may have some tribes it's a, it has urbanization it has craft it has chiefdom almost emerging incipient state and monarchy it has got trade global trade everything is there so suddenly from where it emerged so who created a foundation for sangam age that is this megalithic phase so question is asking you in other way how did a megalithic phase in peninsula created the foundation for the development of later history for example sangam age if you're talking about deep south but if you want to be little nuanced now it is too much of hair splitting but just be, let me tell you for a moment if you want to be little nuanced this is india now this part you see there are lot of structures which are megalithic so the question is about peninsular india it is about peninsula is like this sangam age is only in deep south and not in the rest of india so ideally you should not restrict your answer in connecting megalith only with sangam age although you should do that primarily but not fully or not only you should have sort of certain examples from let us say karnataka some from vidarbha right now these also are developing the satavahanas also have some context in megalith you also have other example if you go to karnataka you have many exam i will discuss about them in moment so somehow you are supposed to connect the megalithic creating the background for some historic era development in deccan and deep south if you have not done that if you have not done that and you have given only the list of agriculture sedentariness iron technology craft specialization long distance trade some kind of religious development community life these are all correct points these are there in your books and notes and we have to use them and they will form the majority of the answer but in the context of the answer as per demand of the question you are supposed to connect as many of them as possible with what you know in satavahan era or sangam era or even maurya era if possible doesn't matter if you are not connecting that then you are not writing the answer you are reproducing facts from the book without digesting them and that should not happen now no book will give you this information because books are there to give all you what as per the chapter it is in upsc only we have to write such answers so you have to be a thinking creature you need some creativity to connect this point on the spot same facts usi masale ko guma phira ke thik se present karna and that you can do if you are able to read the question properly now let us read the question again in what ways so you have to talk about multiple ways can the megalithic culture be considered as the foundational phase of the history of the peninsular india so i have to write something about beforehand that not much was no not much development occurred before megalithic and then i also have to write that very fast it developed so much that it created the foundation for later era if you don't have that backward and forward linkage then your answer factually true but not qualitative you would still get let us say you write all the facts you would still get 4 out of 10 but it will never give you 6 out of 10 6 out of 10 would be a very good score and only those would get it who are able to connect the linkages right now let us come to the answer in the answer uh, i found two three copies in which some of you have drawn map of india and given some site locations now it is a very good thing to do the moment you look at the question you know megalithic you have couple of site junapani for example hire benkal in karnataka we have payampalli tekkal kota or palayannur any site doesn't matter whatever whatever you remember adichennalur important site of megalithic especially so you can 
show at least three or four of them on a map, draw a small box and get one brownie mark. Right, drawing map would be your regular work. I would rather go to the extent of telling that almost one third questions of ancient and medieval India that are asked in the paper can go with map. They can very easily go with map, draw as many maps as possible. Okay, let us come to the question now. Question may typically introduction, body conclusion. Now, how to introduce this question? There are, as you can think right now, two possible ways of introducing the question. One way which most of you have undertaken is you have a keyword in the answer question, and that keyword is megalithic. So you introduce what megalithics are. It is fine. So you talk about megalithic structures. They are large grave stones, a burial site starting from 1100 BCE going up to almost Christian century, distributed over white area concentrated in South India, represent the Iron Age of South or something like that, which is a futuristic, not futuristic, futuristic descriptive introduction of the keyword. So you can have one intro which is descriptive keyword that is megalithic. But this description is fine, but not good. Because when you look at the question, for some of you, the keyword would be megalithic. For me, the keyword is foundational. And I regard foundational as a more important keyword than megalithic. And the moment you are able to think in that way, you have the idea of change and continuity before and after. So, if you do that, you get a good other introduction that what was before megalithic. No development of south, simple. No mesolithic and neolithic phase. If Neolithic, cal 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 Neolithic calculatic phase developments happen very slowly and suddenly there is an outburst. So, you can even evolve this introduction to third type. This is the first one, second one, the third one would be significance of megalithic phase in South India. That is what we are discussing right now. The uh, major achievement of megalithic is to create the basis for the emergence of civilization in next era. Now, this can be either a conclusion or an introduction. It depends on how you want to write. But you should do that. You should not talk about only descriptive introduction. These are good. They will come handy and I will give you a practical advice also in the exam hall for almost 30-40% questions, you will end up writing descriptive keyword introduction which is fine, which is totally fine because you cannot have pre-thought structures for everything. But if at least if for every other question, for 50-60% questions, you are able to come up with introduction which is about the essence of the question. Here essence is foundation and then for rest of them you give, go for keyword you have diversity of introductions and you are going to impress the examiner. Anyway, come to the main body. In body, here you would have connecting line first. After introduction, connecting line. That megalithic cultures form the foundation age of South India in the following ways or something like that. You can have a connecting line and then you go for number of ways starting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The first one is obviously Agriculture. In agri, you have multiple points. You have, first of all, the transition from pastoralism to sedentary life. Right? First transition, because initially people thought, as I said in the beginning, that megalithic sites are associated with some camp sites which are not permanently habited, inhabited, but now we know that they were sedentary people by and large. The second point is about crop diversity. 
the moment you have crop diversity you have insurance some crop can fail some can some don't an example is at the site of payampalli so you go to payampalli in south you have the record or you can have any other site not only payampalli multiple other sites are there from which you have the annual remains of crops you can give any example that is fine you can also have tank irrigation and the fourth corrected point is they used to go for both ravi and kharif based on crop you know that ravi and kharif now you don't have to write all these four points i am giving you this much data you will not be able to accommodate all of them in your answer because it is 10 marker but what is the point the point is neither sedentariness nor crop diversity nor tank irrigation nor rabi and kharif the point is agri surplus because of you can write one or two things of this four but you have to infer the point to agri surplus which creates the context the foundation of emergence of cities in later era if you don't do that linkage if you just mention one or two or three facts it is incomplete argument you have to finish the argument completely this fact char mein se do likhe farak nahi padta any two you can choose and write if you don't end the argument till here then you are not finishing the linkage this is more important than number over here then you have next point that is iron wide spread use of iron and the first data of iron use in peninsula from a megalithic site comes from hallur so hallur site you get use of iron in 300 bce just for the sake of fact if you want to write you can write otherwise you can skip what is important is variety of tools and implements the first point over here would be variety of usages of iron tools and implements and weapons the second point is you have many smelting sites that talks about the development of industry in various parts of deccan and south it is not concentrated in single part it is a well round development in multiple parts of peninsular india and the third point is technological variety you have some moldings you have some molds you have some hammers used for forging when the metal is hot so you not only have iron use what we end up having is developed metallurgical industry which gets reflected not only in iron but also in other metals if like silver gold bronze everything is there although iron is the primary thing so the real point is developed metallurgical industry third point that you know is not only metal metallurgical industry but let me change the color third point is developed craft tradition for that you have to look at the grave goods which are available from various sites especially the two most important sites which have thrown away a diversity of grave goods from various raw metal and of very good technological finish one is junapani near nagpur in dekkan and other is adi chalanur or adi chandalur i think adi chandalur and uh, but anyway so these two sites megalithic sites have provoked given us lot of craft lot of tools lot of other material which tell us that craft industry is quite developed then what is the point okay it is developed so what do i do how does it create the foundation for next phase in two ways firstly you can have red network which will prove in the point that will follow in some time and secondly you have occupational diversity it is an important point 
occupational diversity and because of occupational diversity you again have stratification society and room for creation of cities in the foundation as a foundational phase in next era so these are the points you have to conclude the argument to the logical end then you have trade trade also is an interesting thing trade also is a very interesting thing you have to understand first that there are multiple non local goods available in grave goods so you come to know there was some trade but that is not the point okay there is so trade but so what you have to talk about the extent of trade you have to talk about the pattern and nature of trade that will prove so what in the context of foundation for example a lot of megalithic sites are located on trade routes and these trade routes continued to exist well into historic era mostly up to 19th century 200 years ago for thousands of years we have been using the same trade routes so trade routes is important point and you can talk about that so much that even in the sangam era when we had a huge amount of trade with roman empire a lot of roman coins came to india we have found some roman coins in the amongst the grave goods in megalithic structures so it tells us that these communities which erected megalithic structures continued well into the historic era to the extent that they also participated directly or indirectly in the global trade that is creation foundation right so talk of trade then you have some other things also which are connected to this i will just talk about them very briefly firstly you have community creation the moment you have to construct the huge structures it needs mobilization of resources of labor and for paying the labor through labor exchange through the price of the labor cost or by giving some community feast or some party etc as a ritual who knows you need resources so you have community creation and you also have social stratification because some people can mobilize resources others can't right that also talks about foundational phase you not only have that you have beginning of possibly chief dumps because you have so many iron weapons it seems that the beginning of chief society the tribal era is gone you have sedentary life you have warfare going on you have resources it means some chief is coming into being and this chief dump forms the foundation for state creation you know that evolution a very typical old school evolution that initially you have band society from band you go to tribe society from tribe you go to chief dump from chief dump you go to state state could be monarchy or something else or in between you if you want you can have something called as early state which has some features of state and some features of chief dump so in this the evolutionary spectrum megalithic form over here and sangam age comes either in in somewhere at this intersection some chiefdom some state so in political evolution also when we chair a chol a pandya they come in sangam era you have the background in this case chiefdom similarly the last point you have is ancestor worship because the megalithic structures are constructed or built it is clearly obvious that people worship their ancestor right is it not something very close to the hero worship and then constructing the hero stones in sangam era natu kal right you have the stone memorials constructed not only in sangam era in the form of natu gal you come to know of that in the sangam poetry hero stone but also across peninsular india i come from maharashtra we have outside most of the villages some hero stones we have we call them by various names aya stamb we have even gadhegal gadhegal comes a little later it is not this this kind of thing the different kind of stone but anyway we call them in maharashtra veeragal 
सेम थिंग वीरगढ़ so in entire peninsula especially when you have village communities defending themselves and you have cattle raiding you have such people dying in defending or offending at that time you have their memory we see it emerging in megalithic era again foundational phase right so this is how you connect i'll give one more example this location thing the trade i talked about trade routes also trade route you will give an example once you construct lot of such stones in one era in one area that area start becoming sacred ki yahan pe bahut purkhon ko dafan kiya hai ya dahan kiya hai jo kuch kiya hai to ye hamari punya bhumi hai many such small pockets of having sacred character emerged in deccan and south india and they remained sacred for centuries that followed it is not a coincidence it is not a coincidence that we find Ashokan inscription in south, Brahmagiri, Maski, Jatinga, Rameshwara, etc. These sites are very closely associated with sacred sites that were continuation of this prehistoric tradition. In that very region, we have a huge cluster of megalithic structure. And it is not an isolated coincidence. I will give you one more example. If you come into later era, you also have Chalukyas, the early Chalukyas. of badami and pattadkal right when they started building badami aihol and pattadkal in the valley of malaprabha ghataprabha river in that area also why they chose that area specifically okay there is one reason which is traditional to hinduism that river takes a northern turn uttarmukhi so that area by default becomes sacred that is one thing but that area is also inhabited by host of megalithic structure worshiped by the communities so these structures where they were built remained sacred even in historic era it could be for ashokan era or it could be for chalukya era in karnataka only you see there are a lot of continuities from prehistoric to historic so how would you conclude one can to conclude to be same thing that it created or it was a prelude to the subsequent developments in historic era which you have already proved point by point through all these answers all these points right from agriculture iron age development of craft tradition trade community chiefdom and ancestor worship it's a typical structure we follow from agriculture to religion and culture right nothing great you can talk about a very relevant historian in this case i think it would be the most appropriate to conclude this answer with a relevant historian and her name is anybody चंपक लक्ष्मी चंपक लक्ष्मी इवन उपिंदर टॉक्स अबाउट हर शी हैज सेड दैट द लास्ट फेज ऑफ मेगालिथिक एरा वॉज नथिंग बट संगम एरा इवन शी हैज गॉन टू द एक्सटेंट वेयर शी टॉक्स ऑफ ऑक्यूपेशनल डायवर्सिटी ओवर हियर मेड बी सम फिशरमैन सम हंटर सम पैस्टोरलिस्ट सम ट्रेडर्स एटसेट्रा some peasants she connect them with tinai system that some tinai that are represented not all of them but some tinai that represented in sangam are nothing but this megalithic people again you have historic connection that some of the megalithic cultures form the basis of not all five of them but some of the tinai she has even gone to the extent of this chief for the chief the word used in the old tamil is velir right velir and for the peasant the word is velalla so she has said that these are nothing but the same people so we don't need to go into her argument completely how she is proving it that is not our concern our concern is only that you can quote champak lakshmi very easily in the conclusion by saying that according to her megalithic phase formed the last phase uh sorry megalithic the last phase of megalithic was the beginning of sangam era a good concluding line to prove i hope i am clear the linkages are fundamental converting the facts that you know and manipulating them the way as per the demand of the question that is what the uncertain practice is all about our concern is not to collect more data data is infinite we can't even process that we can't recall that 
if you expect me to tell you some tricks of recalling all the facts on the day of exam, sorry, it can't be done. What is required is first of all contextual analysis of the facts that you already know and recall the relevant facts accordingly. And secondly, you should be aware of such contexts which help you to interpret question in better way, in logical way. These things provide you good answer writing skills, apart from practice obviously. Okay. Chalo, thank you.